Let's tie a bead chain hex. What I have here is a alligator clamp that I get. You can get from any hardware store, and in my uh, placed it in the jaws of my vise. Now I've got six beads here, and I'm crushing the last bead. <clears throat> And you do that by taking your side cutters and look for the seam inside the bead and crush right on top and it'll come off. And what you're doing that, you're going to do it to both ends. So I've got six beads. I'll do it to two of the beads. It's so that I have a stem to place my tail as well as the stem to attach it to my hook. So I've gotten off one end, crushed one end, and taken the bead off. Now place that in my jaws. Now if you look at it, I'm actually tying it in backwards. This is just for the tail section. I've got that little stem hanging out there. Now it's a little loose and it's a little wobbly. It doesn't hold it real tight. But I'll go ahead and tie, um, I will trim my thread and then pinch the jaws to give it extra support and get some uh, good wraps on there. And a good whip finish. Now. For this fly, I'm just going to use a couple of red biots. And you actually want the, the biots to curve inward, just to give it a, a better profile. I'll trim off, oh, just about almost to the notch in that goose biot. Just a loose wrap. It's weird tying with my uh, left hand. And got one side. And I'll place the bi other biot on the other side. The whip finish. Now you have to use those large uh, whip finishers just so you can get over the top of the materials. What I'm doing is I'm grabbing a feather, a small feather, down near the neck of my Brahma hen saddle. And I like using this Brahma hen saddle because it's brown on the outside and then it's got goes to, goes to black. What I've done is I've isolated the tip of my feather, tied in by the tip. my hackle pliers. Now remember your uh, hackle, the cup side needs to be to the right. And just wrap with concentric wraps. You just take it a little easy because that, that stem is in there but not very, there's no way to, to make it really tight. And you just do loose wraps and then you turn around and wrap it with a whip finish and then hit it with a little bit of uh, super glue. I'm trim off my excess, pinch, and then whip finish. Now I'm going to drop in, trim off my thread, and drop in a couple of half, half drops of uh, super glue with my dispenser. 
It ain't going anywhere. Now I'm going to take my abdomen and turn it the other direction and let my tail hang inside the jaws and then just work myself up those beads. Pinch, wrap. Got a goose biot. Pull loose wraps. And because this is tied in the round, you just make sure your biot is opposite the side of the, the first one. Pinch, wrap again, but finish. I'm going to take another Brahma hen saddle feather. And what I'm trying to do is on the body section with the feathers just to give a little bit more texture and movement, slight movement. The legs will move and the, obviously the body will move because it's on a B chain. But say the bug is just um, staying still. Well, those feathers will react with whatever current is around. Got a little bit more excess on that biot. Trim it off. Now those um, nippers I have are not your normal nippers. They've got a not a con no a convex, meaning they curve outward. So you can cut stuff really close. And I got them. Got the idea from. Watching the uh, guys who uh, build their own rods. And they use it to trim off their thread on the guide wraps. So again, grab my feather by the uh, I trim. I pulled off all the fluff. And I'm going to wrap concentric circles with it. Couple tight wraps, whip finish. And a couple micro drops of uh, super glue. Begin again, start my thread. Pinch, lay down a couple good wraps of thread. Bring my biots in again.
We'll finish. Now the reason for the feather, you wouldn't think it'd be important, but I think that when that fly is sitting there stationary, either in mid column or on the bottom, that that he that feather will react to whatever current is around. So though, even though it isn't moving anymore by stripping or whatever else, when it sits still, that feather is still going to entice them or still look like a bug that exudes, uh, it exudes a real bug. Tie it in by the tip. Once again, use my hackle pliers. Pinch, a couple good wraps. And of course, a little bit of CA. Get to that last bead now. Now I like that bead up in the higher up third of those jaws, those alligator clips. Tie my thread, or start my thread. Grab me a couple biots. Wanted to demonstrate how to recover after breaking your thread. Now, if I'd been really smart, I would have had another bobbin all ready to go with the same thread. But, no, I got a little lazy and got a little cocky. So, it, it's not a disaster. Go ahead and start my thread again. No biggie. Place my biot. And tying a uh, biot at the other side also. Lay down a couple good wraps, pinch those jaws, and grab another Brahma hen feather.
Now, what's nice about that Brahma hand and working off of a cape is that it it progresses progressively gets the feathers get larger as you work up or back to the back side of that that cape. So sizing's not an issue, and it gives you that taper. Now, I've taken out that clamp, those alligator clips, and I've placed a Kona BGH number six. One thing you need to remember with this fly is that you've got an abdomen that's made out of beads, and so it's pretty fairly heavy on the back section. So when you stop stripping, it's going to fall backwards. And what you want it to do is to, is to fall straight down or to the front. So you need to compensate where, with a pair of heavy lead eyes. And that's what this is. They're just barbell lead eyes painted red. Gonna figure eight it on. And then add a little super glue also to help it stay in place. It's interesting with these, you know, if you're using just B chain or maybe mono, you don't need to get as heavy with it, but with lead. Barbells, man, you really got to put down a lot of wraps, and you still need to put the super glue on it, or they'll move on you. So I do cross wraps, but then I do wraps around the base of it on the bundle to tighten that bundle up. Now, I've taken my abdomen, that's that other end of the stem, and I'm going to place that in the back of the hook and just tie it down. Now, I'm not worried about, you know, I'm not using any wire, so it's very, I'm just using thread and glue to attach that abdomen. And the reason being is there's no pressure put on that abdomen. When the fish hit this, it's going to hit the hook, and they're not going to hold on to the back end, so I, don't ha I haven't ever had any problems with it, with the uh, fish pulling the abdomen off the hook. Also, the thing is small enough that I think with my especially the bass, they're just going to take the whole thing at one time. They're not going to nip at it, the, whereas the trout are more likely to nip at the, uh, the abdomen, especially the wiggle section of it. Now I've gotten some really couple of started, oh, this is another, excuse me, biot, just to give a couple more legs up in the front end of this baby. Put a place another buyout on the other side. Now I'm going to switch to the really upper end section of the Brahma hen, hen cape. You've got larger feathers, it's the head. What it does is it creates a baffle behind all these feathers that I'm going to put up in the front. And that baffle does is create a dead spot so that the back end wiggles even more. Once again, my hackle pliers. Now I've got two feathers in these hackle pliers. It's interesting. This is one of the, the reason I use these hackle pliers because they're a, it's able to grasp onto two feathers and even three, and I've gone up to four, and still hold those stems, those butt end section of those stems.
Whip finish. Tied in by the fingertips. Capture that stem. Trim. So I pretty much got a very full collar on this fly. Now I'm going to get two more feathers. And what I'm going to use it to do, <coughs> I'm actually going to do a feather figure eight up around the eyes. And these are probably two of the largest feathers off my Brahma hand cat, Brahma hand cape. Just I need the length so I can do that. Wrap a cut one wrap all the way behind the eyes and then cross over, and then wrap the rest of the feather onto the front end of the hook. That's why that opening is left. That's why that extra eye length behind the eye of the hook is there. You see how large that feather is. And you also see how pretty it is. It's got that black center and then the gorgeous brown to the outside. You brought it up to the eye of the hook. And just get some good wraps on the front end. Now it looks a bit messy, but in a minute you'll see it'll clear itself up. Just make sure you capture those stems and get a good wrap around it. Now I'm going to preen back those fibers. Create a head. Now I don't like how that sticks up, so what I'm going to do now, after I whip finish, is push those feathers on top, print them backwards between the eyes. And take a dab of UV resin and stick it in there. Brush it out. And yeah, I've got a little dab of uh, a little brush of UV resin, and I'm placing it at the bottom. And then I preen it back. Doesn't push them all the way back. That's not what I want, but it clears the eyes a little bit. Brush things out. Still not happy with the way that laid down, so I'm going to take some more super glue, excuse me, UV resin, but just a dab more to the right. Hit it again with the UV curing light. It 
It's the thin, clear stuff so that it'll soak in, but it doesn't create a shell back. And trim off the uh, some of the extra feathers underneath the to let the uh, eye, the uh, excuse me, point of the hook be clear. That's basically my uh, bead chain hex. Thank you.